temperature throughout the growing season, starting April and, and going all the way to uh, uh, October. And that trend is probably nothing surprising. Starts off cool in April. You get your peak heat in the end of July into early August, then it tapers off. And again, that's an average, and that average would represent 48 years of, uh, of data over those 70 sites. So a nice smooth line that it would, uh, would create uh, over that time frame. Now that is what 2010 looks like in terms of average temperature. And obviously if those blue bars are above the, uh, that line, that means you had warmer than normal. And if there's gaps between the line and the blue, that would indicate that it was colder than, than normal. And maybe at first glance you can probably see, yeah, there's a lot of gaps uh, in, that, uh, in, in the data. Um, and just if you want to look at it from a numeric standpoint, uh, that's what these numbers up top would, would indicate. Basically, it's saying in the month of April, we were 2.7 degrees below average or below normal. That, from a probability standpoint, and again, I pulled that off that, uh, that website, is about a 1 in 25 year event to be that cold in, uh, in the month of May. Sorry, that's the month of May. In the month of June, it's below normal, not by too much. It's still below normal in July. It's still below normal in August and even into September. And each one of those months are about a one in five, one in six year event. What I don't know, and I'm going to have to talk to Ralph Wright, who does the, who looks after all this data, what's the chances of having five consecutive months of below normal temperature, and those are the five months of the growing season. I suspect that is probably, from a temperature perspective, a one in 25 year event that we've seen last year uh, with regards to, uh, to temperature. So definitely, yes, it, it was cold. And, and uh, um, we'll take a look at some of the things. So yeah, I was just going to mention here as well, I think this attests to the fact that uh, um, when, we are, when I'm, I'm often travel into the States and I meet up with some of my colleagues down there, they often ask, well, what's the weather like in Canada? And I think the best way I've ever been able to describe it, uh, we have nine months of winter, three months of poor ice fishing. And uh, I think that, that kind of sums that up there fairly well. So anyways, let's take a look at this in terms of what happened here now during this, this time frame. Interestingly, back in the middle of April, we actually had a fear that it was going to be a dry spring. There were some very warm temperatures, soils weren't all that moist. So I think it kind of humbles up uh, us a little bit to think it. We were actually thinking it was going to be dry, and it turns out being actually wetter than, uh, than, than normal, which I'll show you. We actually had a very good seeding period, but it was condensed. We had an ideal 10-day seed seeding period, and if you look back, that was probably from May 10th to the 20th of, of May. I would suspect within that area that I'm talking about, 70% of the acres were seeded right in that, uh, that time frame. After seeding, or majority of the seeding was done, we had a terribly cold time frame. We had about 30, what, 29 of 31 days of below normal temperature. And that really impacted crop growth, and I'm going to just give you one example here in a few minutes.